Beach FM Saturday Sports Breakfast. Welcome back to Beach FM with Damien, and it is great honour of mine to welcome in the next guest. He is an Olympian. He won bronze in Rio. He won gold at the Commonwealth Games, and he is currently the world indoor champion. He is a shot putter, and it is great. It would have been one of our biggest chances to win gold in Japan this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Walsh. G'day, Tom. Hey, hey, mate. Uh, Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Thank you for answering the calls. Um, mate, how are you holding up at this time? Uh, yeah, look, everything's not too bad. I'm still um, keeping to a pretty uh, you know, regular routine when it comes to training in some sort. So obviously training has changed quite dramatically what, it, what that looks like, but I'm still trying to um, you know, wake up at the same time, do my prehab, rehab stuff, and, and kind of try and start training at the, about the same time. So you know, uh, the, I guess the, the only the thing that I don't really have at the moment, which is sometimes quite nice, is the travel, which I don't have, which is, is good. So I've got a bit more time around home. Um, and also, you know, the running from meeting to meeting to meeting. I think a lot of people can can testify to that, that it's actually quite good not to have to, you know, sometimes jump in a car and rush across town and jump into another meeting or catch up with someone else. So, um, mate, look, all in all, I'm, I'm in a pretty good space for sure. Awesome, mate. And um, I know I know you're quite handy yourself. Uh, did you get the home gym uh, built in time for, for lockdown? You weren't missing <laughs> any of the essentials going forward? Oh, look, mate. No, I was very lucky that we um, we kind of went into high-performance sport uh, and stole all their stuff. Stole <laughs> is a loose word. I shouldn't say stole. We borrowed um, a lot of their stuff because they obviously are closed down now. So uh, we, we got them a few days before the lockdown and... and um, probably saw the writing on the walls a little bit and, and, and got some of their stuff and, and threw some of it in my garage and some of my other training partners have it in their garages and stuff. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's all going all right, mate. Awesome. Hey, mate, I know you're a constant professional, so I need to I need to get inside your mind for a little bit. Of course, we had the uh, Japan uh, Olympics happening later this year. It has been postponed. Whereabouts was Tom Walsh on his uh, on his road to Japan, like Tokyo? Uh, whereabouts? Because of course, high performance athlete, athletes, you don't want to peak too soon. You don't want to leave it uh, where where you're charging. Whereabouts were yeah. you on that journey before this all happened? I was uh, I was in a really good spot, place, mate. Um, I was actually due to go to a competition um, in Brisbane. Uh, I think when we went to level three. Um, so was that when, or when, when the border, when you had, when you're coming back home, you had to spend two weeks at home. Obviously, that competition, I couldn't go to that one, um, and uh, and I was actually really going well. I, I hadn't had the best summer seasons in terms of distances, but in terms of training in the gym uh, and, and and throwing, you know, and training, all my numbers were indicating that I was was, was ready for a big throw. So uh, it was quite frustrating um, to to get that competition taken away from. For me, uh, I think it was in mid March, but uh, but that's all right, mate. That's all right. We um, we quickly changed and moved on and, and went back into some heavy training. But I was in a really good place. So I I have had a great off season, and uh, the plan going into Tokyo this year was was already nailed out, and we knew exactly what we're doing and when we're doing it and where we're going to be. So um, all in all, I was, I was in a pretty good place, mate. So where does that leave you over the next six to twelve months? Do you have to reassess? Do you have to, uh, do, you know, work out your levels again with um, peaking at the right time? Um, for sure, mate. Like it, uh, we, look, no one knows what it's going to be like in yeah. two months' time, let alone six months' time. And um, look, there is a chance that that there will be some international competitions later this year for me, um, still. But but again, that changes. It can change overnight. Um, so. At the moment, we will probably do some indoor competitions um, here in New Zealand in the winter at some point in time, uh, probably around July, I'd say. Um, fingers crossed, obviously, that we've kind of, uh, New Zealand's got everything kind of under wraps and sorted by then. Um, and, uh, you know, and then who knows if, if it's a chance to finish the Diamond League season in Europe at the end of the year. Um, and and it's obviously uh, in the best interest for everyone involved. Then then I will be there. But um, yeah, it's kind of a funny time because I'm not really sure what I'm training towards right now, like <laughs> exactly. in the immediate future. You know, it, yeah. it's 
there still is the big goals. You know, there's World Indoors next year that have, were, were meant to be in mid-March too, um, which was postponed. And, and so there's that one in, in March next year, uh, and obviously Tokyo um, following that. So, you know, it is a, it is slightly different. And, and, and I would be lying to you if I said motivation wasn't wavering at times because – I don't really know where I'm going, <laughs> you know, and yeah. and and no, not not many people do, um, whether it comes to sport or whether it comes to uh, life and their jobs. So, um, okay, uh, I think if you accept that and you can try and um, handle as best you possibly can, yeah. Yeah. Well, was, uh, that was actually what my next question was: How does a, a high-level uh, athlete, athlete, and an Olympian, uh, how does he treat this time while keeping motivated? Because you know, you could very easily just sit on the couch um, for the next couple of weeks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could, mate. You could indeed. But um, it still was a very important time to, to train and, and to still move forward with things. Um, Motivation is, is a is a weird thing, and uh, you don't have to be motivated to have a good session. You don't have to be motivated to put your shoes on. You just have to be dedicated. Yep. Um, you know, and and you know, if everyone thinks that I that I have that I am motivated every training session I go to, that would be a complete lie. And I and and that's just not how it is. You know, it's like someone who loves their job. Yeah, they they might love their job, but there is days that they go into work and they can't be bothered. So, you know, it's, it's about being aware of that and, and taking it for what it is and then trying to figure out how to get the best out of the session. And, you know, look, as long as you're, you know, operating at, you know, 90%, 95% most of the time, um, you, you're going to be pretty bloody good because, I don't know many people who can operate at a hundred percent and be hammering it all the time and, mm. and be fine, you know? Um, so look, it's, um, it's different, but it's a, it's another challenge. And I guess, it, and also one thing I've found out about this is that I'm incredibly grateful for the support and the, the facility access that I have, mm. because I, I realize that how hard it is training by yourself and how hard it is going to throw sessions by yourself and things like that. So, um, I guess that there's that other side of it is it actually reminds you how lucky you are to have all these facilities and have the coaches and have the physios and have the equipment. Um, because in New Zealand, mate, we've, we're not wanted for anything. We, we've got everything we kind of need and, and it's and it's awesome and, and it just gives us a chance to actually be grateful for that. Absolutely. Well said. Well said, Tom. Hey, mate. Uh, lastly, I, I know you're a dog person. Uh, I've seen I've seen Ripper Ripper on the gram. Yeah. Um, in our household, it's going to be a bit of a um, mission leaving the house after all this. Once the the, <laughs> the dogs are going to have all the love, how how do you think yeah. Ripper's going to find it? Mate, look. To be honest, it's probably opened our eyes to actually how little he does. Um, <laughs> I listen. I'll run him. I'll run you through the day. His day. Absolutely. I'll get him up. At, at 6 30 or something like that. he wanders in he comes and sits on his mat he goes back to sleep until about eight o'clock when i feed him and then he'll go and eat breakfast he'll wander around for 20 minutes and sit back down and go back to sleep he'll sleep from probably 8 30 to let's just say one o'clock and then once we must start making a bit of noise we might he, he might wake up and open his eyes and kind of go back to sleep until 3 30 and then he starts realizing oh this is about the time i get taken for a walk and then we take him for a walk, uh, whether a half an hour or forty five minute walk, and then he comes back inside and goes back to sleep. So, so he doesn't really do too much, mate. So I don't know if it's gonna be a huge concern to him when we go back to work. Oh dear! Well, lucky for you because ours have been yeah. ours have been uh, spastic. So, mate, you, thank you. Well, you you have different dogs, mate. Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. true. This is true. Oh, uh, <laughs> mate, thank you so much for your time today. All the best with uh, keeping the motivation, keeping uh, the journey going towards Tokyo. We're all behind mm -hmm. you, mate. So, uh, absolutely good thank luck. You. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having me on.